A senior mediation advisor in the Central African Republic, Imano Bombande, has warned the current security climate in Ghana has the potential of dragging the country's image to terrible levels in the eyes of the international community if the not-so-impressive handling continues. The situation, he says, could severely impact on the much-discussed year of return slated for August 2019 and also the tourism and hospitality industry of Ghana. He is therefore called on the leadership to work around the clock to assure the international community and potential tourists of their safety in Ghana. Mr. Bombande said this in an interview with Joy News. Building a wall between us is the worst thing that can ever happen to any human being or any humanity. And there is a certain tendency to say that because somebody elsewhere is advocating it, it must have some merit. It has no merit whatsoever. And whether, uh, uh, and, and the good thing in Ghana is that your advocacy can inform policy even if you are not part of that government. You understand what I mean? And I have no doubt that though I'm not uh, uh, in an M governing of party, the, of the governing party, they will listen to me because they do in terms of policy issues to say that they should never be tempted to even think about the idea of a war. You have that track record, yeah, we yes. must put it on. Yes. Let's talk about this terror alert and the kidnapping. Canada has become the first to issue travel warning to its citizens in Ghana. Uh, this is not the first time we've had countries issuing traveling warnings. We've had the US do so in the past. Could this be the beginning of a barrage of travel warning coming from the Western countries and does that have the potential of impacting on the tourism industry and also the hospitality industry? Yeah, my answer to that is yes. And it is not necessarily how many countries begin to issue travel warnings. Mm. The one that Canada has issued today is already a major source of, of information that all travelers reading the story now as it is on BBC about the young Canadian women abducted would want to uh, refer to. And by so doing, it spreads, including the other countries around the world also issuing their warnings. And keep in mind that we too, as a country, when our citizens are in danger, in the foreign ministry, we will advise our citizens. So it's a normal uh, diplomatic practice. However, what it has as a tendency is that many people considering travel to Ghana begin to have in their mind questions about whether or not their protection can be guaranteed. And that's why the response to the problem mm. is as important to be able to convince people that whereas the threat is there, you should still travel because your security will be guaranteed. And to what extent we do that in the next few days to now counter what would be on websites becomes very, very important. Mm. The reason I say that is also in the context of what I refer to. You know, this year in August, we're supposed to have the, uh, uh, what we would call, return to our roots. In which the, year of, the year of return. The, the year of return. Mm. The year of return, by its uh, understanding, is encouraging so many people to travel. I know many uh, people have had lots of information from Ghanaians in the diaspora who want to come back. Wow. Uh, in the month of August. The month of August is also summer. So Ghanaians in the diaspora who normally would want to come home and visit will take advantage of this year to even come back uh, because of the special uh, commemoration yeah. of 400 years of Ghana in the global world. And that is why the timing is so bad because you are going to see that trying to dampen uh, people's travel. Mm. At this point, I wouldn't want to paint the picture that the damage has been done. I would rather suggest that we must be so assertive in our response to what is happening that people who have planned to travel would say I would go. Listen to Mr. Bombande talking about how the current security climate could potentially impact on Ghana's image. And it is not for the government to defend everything, mm. but to be receptive and appreciate opposition contribution. Then Ghana becomes the nation in which the choice of the people to govern does not necessarily mean the people are divided. Mm. And that is the way also that uh, counter-violent extremism becomes 
in my view, efficient because politically we build consensus on an area that affects everybody. It doesn't matter where you belong to. It doesn't matter which political party you are sympathetic to or affiliated or a member. When the kidnappers zoom on you, they don't look for your party card to arrest you. I mean, to, to kidnap you. As long as they kidnap you, they kidnap you like the tidy girls. Mm. Then the other aspect I must add, which is appalling, and it started in Bamako, the idea that you can be sitting in the open and eating at a restaurant and they zoom on you and take you is determined by the color of your skin. So what that begins to do is when our visitors who are non ghanaian who are white in skin color, begin to feel they are not part of because they are a target of kidnapping, because it has become widespread. Mm -hmm. It will drag the image of Ghana down to terrible levels. The Ghana in which the first African country to produce the Secretary General of the United Nations, no, we cannot allow ourselves to be described as a country in which somebody by virtue of the skin color will be afraid to go to. And I find that in the travel warning issued by Canada, some unpalatable description about exactly. Ghana mentioned some suburbs in Accra yes. talk about snatching how how did you find this very travel warning yeah that that part of it in my view was uh, completely unacceptable you see if you look in Kumasi I heard you run about uh, in Shiasu are not poor neighborhoods there was a description here to suggest that the poor neighborhoods are exactly. the areas where kidnappings are likely to happen. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, if you are probably in the Nima community, mm -hmm. you are probably m better, more protected than if you are in airport residential. Exactly. So it, 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 it talks about the naivety also of the officials who put up these uh, alerts. It's about Monday, even though uh, this, uh, acknowledges that the country's borders, particularly the northern part, is porous. He advises against the building of a physical wall as it's unfolding in the U.S. southern border with Mexico, warning it has the potential of needlessly separating families. We in Ghana must quickly learn that whereas our politics is competitive, never should we allow it to divide us to the extent that it can be exploited. And we have lots of evidence that at the community level and at the national level, terrorists exploit your divisions. They know what is happening internally and they come in and align themselves. And before you know, they sow the cells and the, the, their own capacities using your division to now terrorize you. And that's then when you see the bombings. And that is why it's comprehensive, as I described earlier. And so it's the politics, it's the policies that must be deployed. It is the inclusiveness of all of us, the religious tolerance, ethnic tolerance, political toler uh, tolerance, regardless of the competition. That now makes it possible to be dealing with the bigger issues of counterterrorism, uh, countering uh, terrorism, but by anchoring it on countering violent extremism. You just mentioned vacuum, that once we leave a vacuum, the terrorists take advantage of the situation. How easy would it be for them to sow that seed, considering how polarized our political climate in Ghana is? Is it easy or difficult for them to sow that seed here? It is. The, the, the more they are able to determine the deeper level of polarization, the easier it is for them to be able to, if you call themselves, they insert themselves in the polarization. You understand what I mean? They, they try to take advantage of that and become part of. Because they are able to uh, measure the venom and the hatred, including the public hatred that is sowed through the political discord, discourse that is intolerant. Mm. And before you know, you would think that it is part of that uh, polarization of the political discourse, not knowing it has been literally hijacked by them mm. to uh, create the type of uh, uh, attacks that uh, we all know has been happening around us. I'll also talk about vacuum. We know now these potential terrorists are coming through the northern border. Yeah. How porous is that particular border 
And you think we need a war like the U.S. is building no. in, in its southern border? No, not at all. We, we don't need uh, to start with. The idea of a wall is unthinkable because there's no border community of Ghana in which the ethnic community on one side is not also on the other side, including relations, mm. including relatives. So you cannot build a wall to divide you from your own brothers and sisters. We have similar situation in the U.S., but still the president thinks the Mexicans or some of the Mexicans who come in are posing as a threat to them, so he's still going ahead with his war. Do we, do we need it? Let me say that uh, I will resist the temptation to be very political on the U.S., especially as a former government official, because people might read into that. But let me say that those policies, Ghana will not adopt them. And the reason is simple, because we are at a higher human level of reasoning. And we are an African country that understands the deeper meaning of fraternity and solidarity. So who will not go that way? Even at the expense of opening up your country to, to terrorists? Up. In fact, we are not opening up. But doing so, mm -hmm. we are rather in a better position to work across borders with our relationships, whether it's at, et at ethnic levels or at religious levels, to be able to make sure that the bad people mm -hmm. do not have a space. But I agree with you that there is a porosity of borders in terms of the land space. And that is happening across West Africa. Mm -hmm. We cannot have enough personnel to be on every inch of the border. That's why you need to be very strategic. For example, if you take the northern corridor from Hamile in the very west of Ghana, right through to uh, the uh, Boku in the upper east, there are portions such as from, uh, I'll take it, we can take it portions from Hamili to Tumu and from Tumu to Chana and to Navrongo. That are long stretches. Stretch. They, they literally are kilometers and kilometers of vast and empty lands, except few villages. So the Ghana Armed Forces, who must defend the territorial integrity of Ghana, supported by Ghana immigration and the police, have to strategically locate themselves in which interspace in this long corridor, they can easily communicate and deploy to cover all the ground. Mm. In other words, they cannot be on every kilometer, but they can be strategically located to be able to easily move mm. and cover any part that you don't have existing personnel. And of course, working with the community. Imano Bombande there.